this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar and this is the first course on samasa we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham sachidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat chari karti वरीभर्ति संजरीहर्ति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलं जगत चरीकर्ति बरीभर्ति संजरीहर्ति लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर कंसंट्रेटेड ऑन तत्पुरुष समास we have studied so many aspects of the tatpurusha samasa so far in fact tatpurusha samasa is the one which has biggest productivity amongst all the four types of major samasas in sanskrit namely avyayi bhava tatpurusha bahuvrihi and dvandva in that order stated in the ashtadhyayi of panini we also said that there are so many varieties of tatpurusha samasa which are not there in all the other types of samasas panini in his ashtadhyayi has also composed many sutras in order to explain the tatpurusha samasa which is not the case with other types of samasas be it samasa vidhayaka sutra or be it samasanta pratyaya vidhayaka sutra or be it samasa vidhayaka samasa swara vidhayaka sutra panini has composed a number of sutras in comparison with the other samasas the derivation of the tatpurusha samasa can be shown in brief in the following manner we have two entities x and y they are independent of each other in terms of their meaning as well as their word form and also their accent they are however interrelated semantically now the speaker of sanskrit decides that these two elements need to be merged and so these two elements undergo some process primarily at the cognitive level and they are merged together and one output is generated in the form of one unit so xy is that output which is one unit in terms of one meaning and one word form and also one accent now the feature of the tatpurusha samasa is that y which is the second member of the samasa or the uttara pada in xy this assumes the headship as far as the meaning is concerned what it implies is that when this xy is used as part of the sentence xy will be interrelated with any other word in the sentence only through y xy will not be interrelated with any other word through x without going through y when there are instances where x is interrelated to any other external word in the sentence without going through y such words are treated as exceptions and 
are noted down as asamartha samasa which we have already studied before we also studied the many varieties of tatpurusha samasa namely the vibhakti tatpurusha we studied dvitiya tritiya chaturthi panchami saptami and shashti vibhakti tatpurushas in this particular order as is stated by the grammar of panini in this study we highlighted the fact that the karaka theory is the base of the samartha theory we then studied karma dharaya another important type of tatpurusha samasa and we studied a number of sutras in 2.1 which explain the karma dharaya samasa we also referred to the pumvat bhava technique stated by the sutra striya pumvat bhashita pumska danum samanadhikarane striyam apurani priyadishu and so on we then studied the ekadeshi samasa and also the naya tatpurusha samasa then we started studying the pradi samasa and now we are studying the gati samasa pradi samasa and gati samasa is stated by one and the same sutra namely kugati pradayaha the unique feature of pradi samasa and gati samasa from the earlier samasas is that the vibhakti tatpurusha as well as the karma dharaya tatpurusha they are stated in the adhikara vibhasha 2111 which means that there is an optionality the same meaning can be conveyed with the same constituent elements in the compound as well as in the sentence whereas gati samasa and pradi samasa and now upapada samasa also is of a different kind because there is an adhikara nityam which governs them so pradi samasa as well as gati samasa as well as upapada samasa they are nitya samasas either avigraha or aswapad vigraha is the way to explain these samasas so kugati pradayah is the sutra which states the gati samasa and we have studied this before let us quickly go through the meaning of this sutra kugati pradayah has got one word kugati pradayah which is in prathama bahuvachana and with what it consists of the word ku the words gati and the words grouped as pradis words continued are sup and sahasupa also samartha padavidhi is continued and also nityam is continued because kugati pradaya is stated in prathama they will be termed as upasarjana because of prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and then these words will have the purva nipata they will occupy the initial position of the samasa because of upasarjanam purvam so now the meaning of the sutra is any subanta whose pratipadikas are ku as well as the words termed gati and the words grouped as pradis is always compounded with any other interrelated subanta i repeat any subanta whose pratipadikas are ku as well as the words termed gati and the words grouped as pradis is always compounded with any other interrelated subanta this is a nitya samasa of asvapad vigraha type we also saw that the term gati is stated by the sutra gatischa and primarily it is applied to the pradis when they get 
related to the action denoted by the verbal root. The pradis are then termed as upasarga and also gati. The purpose of the term gati is twofold, swara as well as shatva, natva, abhava. The swara is stated by the sutra gati ranantaraha as well as gati ragatau as well as gati karakopapadanam krita etc. and shatva, natva, abhava. So shatva and natva are the retroflex operations substituting sh and na in place of sa and na where in the sutras we find references of upasarga. Upasargat sunoti suvati is the sutra which states the shatva in place of sa and upasargat asamasi pinopadeshasya this is the sutra which states the dhanatva in place of na. Now the purpose of the gati saudhnya is that there is no shatva nor natva. So upasarga is the condition for shatva and natva. Gati is not. And the other purpose of the term gati is the compound stated by kugati pradayaha. The term gati is primarily assigned to pradis when linked to action denoted by the verbal root and then also to some other words stated in the section 1460 on words up to 1479. And we have already seen the sutra Uriyadich Vedachascha where we have seen that the word Uri etc. they are termed Gati and the Chvi Pratyayanta words they are also termed Gati and Dach Pratyayanta words they are also termed Gati and Gati Samasa then takes place. This is Anitya Samasa. Let us continue studying the Gati Saudhnya and also the Gati Samasa. Now the next sutra is Anukaranam Cha Aniti Param. This is what states the Gati Saudhnya. This is 1462. What it means is and an imitation word when not immediately followed by the word iti, when in connection with an action denoted by the verbal root, is termed gati. I repeat, and an imitation word. So anukarana is an imitation word. When not immediately followed by the word iti, when in connection with an action denoted by the verbal root, is termed gati. So now, khat is an anukarana. There is some sound in nature which resembles the sound khat and somebody imitates this sound. So now this is an anukarana and when you are not quoting it using the word iti, you could say khat iti. But when you are not doing khat iti, you can give it gati saudhnya and then Kugati Pradayaha can apply and one can have the Gati Samasa. So after having made the Khat sound, one can get the word Khat Kritya, which is a finally derived compound output by undergoing the same procedure as is shown before, namely Khat plus Su plus Kru plus Tva plus Su and then Samasa Saudhnya takes place. So the Pratipadika Saudhnya also takes place and then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and deletes the Su Pratyaya and then Tva is changed to Lyap and then you have Khat Kritya as the finally derived compound output. Similarly when the meaning intended is the imitation of the sound Khat just the action of imitation is intended to be conveyed and then you and then the compound output generated is khat kritam khat kritam this is a compound this is a gati compound 
and cut becomes kati saudnyaka because of this sutra anukaranam cha aniti param where cut is the anukarana or imitation then we have <coughs> the next sutra stating the gati saudnya 1463 namely आदरानादरयोः सदसति आदरानादरयोः सदसति आदरानादरयोः इज द सेवेंथ केस मीनिंग आदर एंड अनादर आर द सेंसेस सदसति इज वन टू मीनिंग सत एंड असत द वर्ड्स एंड नाउ दिस इज प्रथमा विभक्ति सो दिस विल ऑक्युपाय द initial position in the compound because they will be termed as upasarjana by the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and they will occupy the initial position because of the sutra kugati pradayah now the meaning of the sutra is the words sat and asat when denoting the sense of respect adar and anadar adar is explained as prityatishaya and non respect is explained as paribhava audasinyam respectively then these two words are termed gati आदरानादरयो सदसति सो वेन यू हैव द मीनिंग हैविंग डन रिस्पेक्टफुल वर्क और हैविंग डन नॉन रिस्पेक्टफुल वर्क वेन यू से हैविंग डन रिस्पेक्टफुल वर्क इट मीन्स दैट इट जनरेट सम काइंड ऑफ हैप्पीनेस एंड वेन यू से नॉन रिस्पेक्टफुल वर्क इट जनरेट सम काइंड ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस so sat is the word and it gets gati saudnya and then there is gati samasa and so we have sat and kru and twa so sat su kru twa plus su and then there is samasa saudnya followed by pratipadika saudnya followed by the sub luk by supodhatu pratipadika yo ho and then twa is substituted by lap and then there is augment that is added to kru and so finally we get the form satkritya as well as asatkritya as the finally derived compound output similarly when we have respectful work or non respectful work as the meaning intended to be expressed we have the compound satkrita as well as asatkrita sat and asat become gati saudnyaka because of this particular sutra adaranadarayo sadasati and then they get compounded because of kugati pradaya then we have the word bhushane alam then we have the sutra bhushane alam this is 1464 the word alam in the sense of decoration is termed gati so the meaning is after having decorated and here we have alam plus su plus kru plus twa plus su and then samasa saudnya happens because of kugati pradaya alam becomes gati because of bhushane alam and then samasa saudnya happens then pratipadika saudnya happens then we have supodhatu pratipadika yoho which deletes the supratyayas which are part of the samasa samasa and then finally twa is substituted by lap and then kru gets the augment at the end and so we have the form alankritya after having decorated this is a gati samasa similarly alankrita is an example of gati samasa alankrita means decorated where the word alam 
is used in the sense of decoration, bhushana. The word alam also has three other meanings, pratishedha, negation, samarthya, strength and paryapti which is capability. So in these three senses when the word alam is used it does it is not termed gati. It is termed gati only in the sense of bhushana or alankara and only then you have the compounds alankrita and alankritya taking place. Now the next sutra stating the Gati Saudhnya is Antar Aparigrahe. Antar Aparigrahe. In this sutra, Antar is in Prathama, Aparigrahe is in the Saptami. Now in the sense of Aparigraha, the word Antar becomes Gati Saudhnya. That is the meaning of the sutra. We read the meaning, the word Antar in the sense of other than acceptance. Parigraha is acceptance and aparigraha is other than acceptance, namely middle. So it is termed as Gati Saudhnya. So now the word Antar has got several meanings and one of the meanings is middle. So this is not the meaning of acceptance. And so in the sense of middle, the word antar gets the term gati. So if we have the meaning to be expressed, namely, after having hit in the middle, antar hatva. So we have antar plus su and hana plus tva plus su. Now there is gati saudhnya and by this sutra, antar aparigrahe, and so Kugati Pradayaha states the compound and once the compound happens then the Pratipadika Saudhnya applies then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and deletes the Supratyayas then twice substituted by Lepu and then you have Antarhana and Lepu now before that Na in Hana is deleted and so now you have Antar, Hana and Ya and then there is Augmenta that takes place. So you have Antarhatya as the derived output, Antarhatya. This is a Gati Samasa. Similarly, when you have something that is struck in the middle as the meaning to be expressed, you have the compound Antarhatam. This is the Gati Samasa, Antarhatam. The next sutra is Kane Manasi Shraddha Pratighate. This is 1466. And the meaning of the sutra is the words Kane, which, which means extreme desire, and Manas, which means desire. In the sense of striking the belief, Shraddha Pratighata, which means unbelievable, they are termed as Gati. Repeat, the words Kane, which means extreme desire, and Manas, which means desire, in the sense of striking the belief, which means that unbelievable, they are termed Gati. So the meaning intended over here is, having drunk the milk, till the extreme desire gets finished or is over or doesn't remain or is unbelievable. So we have Kanehatya Payapipati. Kanehatya is the Gati Samasa where Kane is the Purvapada and we have Hana plus Tva as the Tva suffix and then there is Su and finally, after undergoing the same process, we get Kanehatya as well as Manohatya. Kanehatya Payapipati or Manohatya Payapipati, having drunk the milk till the extreme desire is fulfilled, till the mind is satisfied. 
तावत् पिबति यावदस्य अभिलाषः निवृत्तः अतिशयेन अभिलष्य तन निवृत्ति पर्यंतम पिबति दिस इज हाउ द कमेंटरीज एक्सप्लेन कणेहत्य एंड मनोहत्य द नेक्स्ट सूत्र इज पुरह अव्ययम दिस इज 1467 दिस मींस द वर्ड पुरस व्हेन एन इनडिक्लाइनेबल इज टर्मड गति नाउ द वर्ड पुरह इज डिराइव्ड बाय द सूत्र पूर्वाधरावरासि पुरधवश्चा फाइव थ्री थर्टी नाइन वेर पुरस मीन्स इन द ईस्टर्न डिरेक्शन सो नाउ इफ द मीनिंग इज हैविंग डन इन द ईस्टर्न डिरेक्शन हैविंग डन समथिंग इन द ईस्टर्न डिरेक्शन द वर्ड पुरस बिकम्स कति सौज्ञक एंड देन बिकॉज ऑफ कुगति प्रादय द कंपाउंड टेक्स प्लेस एंड वी अप्लाय द सस सौज्ञ एक्सेट्रा and then the finally derived compound form is puraskritya so twice substituted by lep and so on and we get the form puraskritya similarly when we have the meaning something done in the eastern direction and we get the samasa puraskrita this is a gati samasa where the word puras which is an indeclinable is the first member of the compound similarly the word ast stated in the sutra astancha is gati saudnyaka the sutra 1468 means and the word astam in the sense of non availability or anupalabdhi is termed gati and then kugati pradaya states the gati samasa and so when the meaning is having turned non available or having disappeared we have the following samasa astangatya savita punarudeti the sun having set rises again astangatya is the form of the gati samasa so here we have astam plus am and gama plus twa plus su and supodhatu pratipadika yoho happens twice substituted by lep before that m in gama is deleted and so we get the form astangatya similarly when the meaning is one which disappears so we have astangatani dhanani so astangata is the gati samasa output Finally, we have acha gatyartha vadeshu, one four sixty nine, meaning the word acha in the sense of two words is termed gati when immediately followed by verb verbal roots, meaning motion as well as speaking. So the meaning is having gone or spoken two words, means is expressed by the samasa acha gatya. or achodya which is an example of gati samasa when we have the meaning having gone then the compound output is achagatam or achoditam these are the examples of gati samasa to summarize the term gati is assigned to many specific words which denote specific meanings when they undergo operations like compounding as well as accent by the sutra gatikaraka upapadat krit 62139 the accent will be determined on the uttara pad in many of these cases also important to remember that the words which get the term gati do not denote meanings by themselves they are considered to be dyotakas they function to bring to the fore the meaning of the associated verbal root this is extremely important we continue studying the gati saudhnya further and explain the gati samasa further in the coming lecture these are the texts referred to thank you very much